Celebrating the magic of high school sports, Allen Media Group proudly presents the WIAA Boys State Soccer Championships. Live from Uline Soccer Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this WIAA Sports Exclusive is brought to you statewide by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation, zero in Wisconsin. Together we can save lives. Rural Mutual Insurance Company, premiums paid here stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. A proud sponsor of the WIAA Rural Mutual Sportsmanship Award for over 50 years. And we act, we teach, we inspire. From the E-Line Soccer Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, it's continuing coverage of the 42nd WIAA Boys Soccer State Tournament. In Division II, Golden Ball on the line as the West Appear Phantoms take on the Broncos of Union Grove. We check out how these teams got the championship Saturday. The Phantoms played comeback from down 2-0, knocked off Walker Saw West 3-2, and Union Grove flanking the Forest 2-0. Welcome to our match coverage alongside Eric Shazer. My name is Matt Mendel. We four teams that qualified for state for the first time in their program's history. These are two of those teams. What an opportunity for these two programs looking for their first state title. Well, Matt, hopefully they got over those new to state jitters in their semifinal games and they come to play today. Union Grove, they're going to have to put some more shots on goal and defend like they did in their semifinal. And West Appear Phantoms, they're hoping they don't get behind early and they played a strong second half and hope to continue that today. Championship Saturday continues here in Division Two. It's West Appear and Union Grove. And now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. In Wisconsin, something important happens in our public schools learning and inspiration to shape the next generation. Every single day, public school educators open the doors of opportunity for our students. Hand in hand with families, we work to be sure all students everywhere have what they need to meet their full potential. The members of the Wisconsin Education Association Council go above and beyond for our students. Join us, we act, we teach, we inspire. Bobby, are you there? I heard all this noise and then I was thinking you dropped the connection, uh, but I'm a little worried. Honey, are you all right? Bobby, where are, I hear sirens. Bobby, what's going on? Please, please answer me. Oh God, Bobby, no, no, no. Hey. Call insurance agent. Insurance agent not found in contact. Call insurance company. Insurance company is currently closed. Please call back during business hours. For directions, press one. For billing, press two. If you would like to speak with an agent, you have missed dial. Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Don't worry, we're gonna get this taken care of. Thanks, man. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tight. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Menards is your one-stop shop for all your pet supply needs. From leashes and collars to toys and food, you're sure to find what you're looking for. Stock up on Master Paws Original Dog Food for just $28.99 after rebate. Or pick up Master Paws Cat Litter for $9.99 after rebate. If you need it for your pet, you'll find it at Menards. Because we know the pets are family, and family deserves the best. Save big money at Menards. When I drive in this lane, I move fast and make sudden moves to drive to the hoop and score. But when I drive in this lane, I control my drive, I don't speed or make sudden movements. Speeding and reckless drive are leading causes of injuries and deaths in Wisconsin. 
Do what I do. Control your drive. Don't speed. Don't be reckless. Zero in Wisconsin. Together we can save lives. Back to Eli Soccer Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The game time temperature of 51 degrees. This Division II championship matchup between the Union Grove Broncos and the Phantoms of West Appear. Here are the starting lines, which are brought to you by Royal Mutual Insurance Company. Premiums paid here, stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. A look at the starting 11 for West Appear. Tyler Kowalczyk leads the way. He has scored over 24 goals with 13 assists. Under head coach Brian Kamler. As for the Union Grove Broncos, they have had a number of different goal to scores led by Owen Zakowski. That's for head coach Sean Young. This Broncos team, they've been able to score 73 times on the season. Matter would be interesting to see how this game plays out with both teams new to the uh, state tournament this year. And successful in their semifinals. I think Union Grove, the Broncos, they're going to have to get some more shots on goal than they did in that first game if they're going to get past West of Pier. And look at a strike right away at Ethan Barsh in front. He has come through with six goals and six assists. That matchup on Thursday for the Broncos, scoring twice in the opening 40, including a penalty kick awarded just 24 seconds on in. And Owen Zakowski able to bury the PK. Niall Hagen came through with a goal off a corner kick. He is one of those players that has been able to, to score and also come through with his fair share of assists. He broke the single season assist record for Union Grove High School. That'll get rid of some of those jitters early, Matt, when you get a uh, PK right away and manage to convert it and get a lead right at the beginning of your uh, first semifinal ever at state. No questions, the Broncos plus one in shots at 10 at nine against the Forest. Here come the Phantoms with that pass from Richard Perez. Angling back in with Braden Kelnhofer, he sports jersey number nine. This West Pier team's been able to score in bunches. They have scored 97 times this season. They are not given up a goal in the postseason until that semi on Thursday. Again, coming back from down 2 0, big second half, and eventually tying things up with 14 seconds left in regulation. Here are the keys to the game brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards and all your home improvement needs. We talked about these are two teams new to the state tournament field, so these first 10 plus minutes, so critical. Just the excitement and everything that goes into it, and the nervousness, and just getting past that. Hopefully, they got past that in their semifinals and, and winning those games. But getting to this championship game is pretty heady, heady stuff. So how do they handle this, the early portions of this game is going to be huge for both teams. The Broncos focusing on Landon Arnstad. Arnstad for West Pier with a couple of goals and one assist in the semi on Thursday. He took six shots, five of which on goal. Got to know where number seven is if you're Union Grove. And then for the Broncos... Right now, they're just, as we mentioned, weather the storm, trying to hold off a West Appear team. Looking to build off that momentum they had from the second half on from Thursday. And as Brian Kamler looks on, the St. Louis, Missouri native. A couple of years now at the West Appear helm. They won 11 games a year ago, up to 18 victories this season. And Sean Young, over a decade plus with Union Grove, and they've come a long way. 1 and 20 in year number one, 19, 4 and 1 here a decade plus later. That's the way it usually, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes starts out is once you're, you've got a new program and new players and some lack of experience. Uh, it just takes time to keep building and building, and this is the ultimate payoff getting to the state tournament and getting to that state uh, championship game with an opportunity to win a gold ball. They've experienced a number of program firsts as of late. First regional title in 2018. First ever Southern Lakes Conference Championship in 2022. And now their first state appearance here in 2023. It's progress. Just each year getting better and better. And you start taking those steps up the ladder. And now here you are in the 
the goal and uh, the challenge uh, for Coach Young and the Union Grove Broncos is going to be uh, maintaining that. They've had those successes. Now how can they make sure that they're a perennial uh, conference contender, perennial, you know, regional finalist, and getting into those sectionals and, you know, getting the state on a regular basis. Owen Zakowski with a look for Union Grove. Came into the state tournament with 18 goals to his credit. We mentioned he had the PK, but 24 seconds in on Thursday. He has proved five goals, one assist here in the postseason. Nice turn by Zakowski there. Turned hard, got it on his left foot. Uh, unless you've scouted somebody and know, uh, you know, often you assume most players are going to be at least dominant uh, with their right and maybe not as comfortable with their left. Uh, but if you've got a forward or an attacker who's comfortable with either one, uh, that is especially dangerous. Free kick here for Jackson Zimmerman. See Niall Hagen, what he's been able to do with the 17 goals, mentioned the assist total. Again, he's among the who's who in the record book for Union Grove when it comes to points, when it comes to assists. Well, opportunity with Niall Hagen making things happen again for Union Grove, but a look there at Ben Waller. He is the starting goalkeeper for West Pier. Matt, that's always impressive to me when you've got almost as many assists as goals. That means you're uh, putting yourself in position, obviously, to score, uh, but you've also got good field vision. And you realize that when you're in a position to score, that also may be setting up uh, one of your teammates for an opportunity. Following a tough collision. A couple of players slow and getting back up. Ouch. Looks like they hit head to head then. Ryan Lee is back up for Union Grove. And it appears for the Phantoms. Tyler Kowalczyk, all right. A look at Landon Arnstam mentioned. Broncos have to know where he is at all times as he was able to really make an impact in that comeback versus Waukesha West. Yeah, Arnstead had two goals. He had the game winner uh, against Waukesha West. Uh, the Phantoms are pretty, uh, pretty well balanced throughout. They've got uh, Kowalczyk and Arnstead, Romatowski, all with uh, double-digit goals, so that can be especially dangerous. Dangerous when you got a team that has multiple guys who've had a lot of success putting the ball in the back of the net. You saw Sport in the uh, blue. The head referee is Steve Van Derzen from Kakana, David Grable and Justin Olszewski from Oshkosh and Freedom, the two ARs. Steve always does a really nice job. Whenever we'd have have had him, takes control of the game, calls a good, good solid game. Easy to talk to. And so far he's only had one foul to whistle for each side. Gets some medical attention, Ryan Lee for Union Grove. Oh. Broncos have had pretty good possession early on. Number three seed in Division II among the four to qualify for a state unranked in the final Division II state rankings. They have won seven consecutive phone as Stretcher would see them lose two of three. Now getting back defensively at the fuck that Zimmerman got a piece of it. And we take it away here with Grayson Berter. He sports jersey four. We have Dylan Fox on that right side as well for Union Grove. Holt Wojciechowski, a sophomore defender. And across here for the Broncos, Ashton Rischkiss. This is a little dangerous. Finn Jacobs coming out of the Union Grove goal there. Wandered a little far from his gold mouth. Still battling with Tyler Kowalczyk. He was 2,022. All comes on will mention out of the Bay Conference. Northern Michigan bound. And back up top, getting a touch, did Landon Arnstad keeping the possession here with West Pier. Berter, 
Being flanked by a couple down he goes. Broncos take away. And for Union Grove. Sent he, over by Owen Zakowski. Union Grove doing a nice job getting guys behind the ball. Zakowski on the pass. That shot will go wide for Niall Hagen. He was all comfortable mentioned in 2022 in the Southern Lakes Conference. Great idea. Unfortunately, the ball just ran past Hagen just a little too much. He wasn't able to get his hips around it. As I said, the uh, Broncos, nice job getting numbers behind the ball. One thing they have to make sure they, they don't do defensively is just hang in space. They got to make sure they then step out and pick somebody up, that they step out, close down the ball, make sure they pick out that next attacker, cut off those passes. Sometimes you can lull yourself to sleep when you got numbers back uh, and you're not going aggressively to the ball. Evan Capel putting it back into play for the Phantoms. Waiting back for West Superior was Landon Arnstad. Now out of midfield. Off that run with Peyton Ford. He is back here with Union Grove. Ford, this sophomore year, he transferred in from Racine Case. He's among the top three finishers for Union Grove. Love when talking with Brian Campbell, the head coach for West Appear, and talking about concerns coming into the state tournament like any other coach. He has won. Score goals. And that was one of the big emphasis coming in is just finishing those opportunities. When you get an opportunity, you got to finish. Especially on this stage. You're not going to, against this quality competition, you're not going to get many opportunities. So you got to take advantage uh, when you have them. Look at Thursday, only a couple of shots in that first half. Nothing to show for it on the scoreboard, but then had four opportunities in the second half and able to bury two of those chances, including the, the game tire, thanks to Carter Borley from Landon Arnstad, forcing overtime. Came off a set piece. Ford going forward, he's a defender. Gets held up at the 18. That's going to be a foul. Right atop the box here for Peyton Ford, so a dangerous opportunity coming for the Broncos. This comes here in the 11th minute. Uh, the Broncos are playing a 3-5-2, and so that gives Horde, he's sort of in a defensive midfielder position, gives him a chance to really use his skills getting forward. That's what Coach Young is looking for. The ball being placed here by Tyler Hagen. On the ball along with Peyton Horde. Hagen off the wall. Goes after it. Back to the 18. Waiting with Owen Zakowski. And the Phantoms. For some of the oncoming pressure. Zakowski on that far side for Union Grove. Hoard. On the one touch. Barsh. Union Grove's definitely been on the front foot so far in this match. West appears got to maintain their cool. Make sure they're still looking to possess the ball, not just clearing it out, because this is what happens. If you just clear it, then all of a sudden Union Grove is back in the attack again. Jump of the pass, Capel. He was all comfortable mentioned last year in the Bay Conference. Arnstad. Let's put a couple down. He goes in a foul here against Union Grove. There's one of those. He's taken on three defenders. Those defenders have to realize a foul like that in that area uh, is not the best thing to do. You've got him defended. You've got him bottled up. Just stay low. Stay in front. Because now West Appear, even though Union Grove's had the run of play so far, West Appear is not in a position to put a ball in the box in a dangerous area. Free kick here for Arnstad. And brought in cleanly by Finn Jacobs. The Starting goalkeeper, a freshman, who this season has seen a goals against average just over one. Can be interesting to see how Jacobs uh, does in this game. It's a tall order, being a freshman, playing in a state championship game. A couple of saves during the shutout of the Forest on Thursday, a second postseason shutout. The team has 
had a total of nine now on the, on the season. Back there defensively is Dylan Fox. Given back with Kowalczyk. And Union Grove with Ford. Against Borley. As Fox makes his run. Sikowski. I like how Union Grove is taking their time, building the attack, connecting passes together. Uh, that's just hard to defend. Both teams with Ryan Lee. He is back up on the injury scares. You see Finn Jacobs. Only a freshman taking over the, the goalkeeping responsibilities. Well, he's 6'2", that helps. Having some size, and for West to Pier, uh, going against that, you realize you want to keep it low. Got to make a, a tall goalie like that get down. Yeah, very long wingspan for Finn Jacobs, and a look at Ben Waller. He's also good sized at six feet. Towers over my partner, Matt, here. It's also Waller's first year as a starter. Just pretend like I didn't even hear that. <laughs> the personal slight. Yes. It's all right. We'll move on. This is coming the uh, Broncos route. Going be, down to Tyler Hagen. This will be interesting because Wohler, the goalkeeper for the uh, Phantoms, is a senior. Finn Jacobs, the goalkeeper for the Broncos, is a freshman. We'll see how this game plays out. If that experience uh, that Wohler has over four years of high school soccer... Uh, but this year, first year as a starter, uh, if that's going to play a major role in our game today. Zimmerman had Ford in front. Played right back, Tyler Hagen. Hagen, Osikowski, Horde. And now Barsh. Going to be a goal kick here. Again for the Phantoms. Hort's a big guy. I would think on uh, any free kicks or set plays like that, they're going to be looking uh, to get Peyton a Hort near the goal and get the ball on his head. Put back into play there with Spencer Tennyson. And over comes Dylan Fox. This Broncos team knocking off Milwaukee Arts, along with Greenfield, to win a regional championship. Elkhorn area and Greendale for the sectional title. That Greendale program knocking off top seeded West Tulsa Central in the sectional semi by way of a shootout. 13 to 12 was the shootout after a 2 2 tie through a couple of overtimes. Talk about suspense. Holy cow. You're getting into a lot of guys. That's a marathon. A lot of guys on your bench who maybe didn't even see a lot of action during the game. That shootout lasted longer than two overtimes combined. Now on this near side for the Broncos, Ethan Barsh. And staying here with Union Grove. Man, I'm just looking over this Union Grove roster and you look at how young they are, you know, Three out of their top, uh, or four of their top five scorers are all under, you know, sophomores and juniors. Uh, they're hoping, like we said, that build up, progressively looking to get better every year, that this is just the start with all these guys who will be coming back next year, uh, that they'll use this experience as a springboard to getting back here. Yeah, youth abound when you look at the Broncos, look at their starting 11. They start a freshman goalkeeper and then five sophomores in that starting 11. There is the freshman keeper, Finn Jacob. But again, at this point in the season, it all goes by the wayside. These guys have a full year now under their belt. And it's just playing. They just have to remember, it's just a game. Use the experiences that they've had and all that they've learned. And just play. The team has found ways. They have been resilient, according to head coach Sean Young, finding ways to battle back from injuries to losses heartbreak and abundance of setbacks along the way and you look at that sectional semi against Elkhorn area 
able to battle back for that 3-2 victory. In fact, back-to-back -back wins to win the sectional championship down 2-1 at halftime in both instances and prevailing 3-2. Sectional semis scoring twice in the final, five against uh, Greendale then in the sectional final, three race of deficit, so they have found ways with their backs against the wall to prevail. Especially you mentioned uh, Elkhorn area, there's a perennially solid yep. team, strong team, and they had lost to them. They were the conference, their conference champions, uh, and they lost them four nothing earlier in the season. And then to be down at halftime of your sectional semifinal, uh, and then come back. Uh, that that shows some resiliency for a young a young group, and that's how you build and how you mature and gain that mental strength. See the shot from Niall Hagen. Yeah, you bring up that loss against Elkhorn area that was back on September 5th. Following that loss, talking about bouncing back, winning eight consecutive. They've also had losses against a school from Illinois and a loss against Greendale on October 5th. So a couple of Revenge victories in route to that sectional championship. Yeah, that's awesome when you look at it and you see uh, losing 4 0 to Elkhorn, 3 1 to Greendale, uh, and then coming back and beating them in two most important games of their season that sectional semifinal and that sectional final uh, is pretty amazing. We talked about it in our earlier game, Matt. Maybe there's a little bit of an advantage. You know, you lost during the season, and you know we weren't at those games. We're four nothing and three one. They sound sort of comfortable, and you know those teams come in and they think, oh, we handled these guys no problem last time. Uh, that can actually be uh, an advantage uh, for the team that lost that early game. Well, here comes Zakowski. We've seen here in the first half, the advantage has been with Union Grove. Talking about weather in the storm right now, that's what the fans, Phantoms are doing here in the, in the first now almost 20 minutes. They gotta hang in there. Just keep possessing, make sure you're finding feet with that pass. Don't just clear it out. Be strong, stay with the game plan. West Tapir was down two nothing within the first 24 minutes on Thursday to Waukesha West. Completely different game thereafter. Be interesting to see today. You know, the first half has not been their game so far, and we're 20 minutes in. You know, how does that second half look for them? Does it just take them a while to get started? Um, I don't know if you can keep living that way uh, for too long and continue to be successful. They're going to have to start picking it up here. Zimmerman, open on this near side, you have. Ashton Rishkiss. With Count Hoffer going through the middle. Horde there for Union Grove. Knocked off the cleat. Now with Johan Hernandez. Still battling. Ryan Lee will send it ahead. Off the run with Ethan Barsh. That's going to result in a throw in here for the Broncos. What is a seven consecutive? Look at that last matchup on Thursday. They played exactly 12, only one change the entire way. And yet, and we'll get it done a couple of goals before the break. They will limit the quality of chances two to four. They only had a couple of shots on goal. That might be the big strength of this team is their ability to bounce back from adversity, the resilience of this program. And the only concerns coming in was, again, talking about that youth. And even though at this point, you have a good 23, 24 games under your belt, still a concern in this environment. With only two seniors on this roster, only one that starts. Well, so far, they haven't shown, uh, haven't shown their youth yet. With their uh, victory in their semifinal over uh, DeForest, and now just playing a solid first half, at least up until this point, against West Appear. Borley overcomes Horde. 
sent away as Broncos dump it downfield. Run here for Olin Zakowski. That's going to roll out of play. The Wisconsin Education Association Council thanks all public school educators giving their all this school year. We act, we teach, we inspire. Matt, just looking at stats for both teams with neither team having like that one guy that scores all their goals, I was just wondering, you know, who is it who's going to assert themselves, you know, in, in this game, insert themselves into this game and really assert that skill and that shot-making ability. Sometimes when you got a bunch of guys who do it, sometimes they just sort of wait for somebody to, to pick it up instead of having just that one guy who's your go-to guy. Uh, so, so far in this game, we haven't seen just that finishing uh, strength from either, either team, especially Union Grove. They've been on the attack most of the game. Uh, just wondering who's gonna, who's gonna step out and step up for each team. Here's Ryan Lee as that ball is put back into play by Jackson Zimmerman. Phantoms now looking to counter through the middle. Arnstad, but again, plenty of Broncos around for Union Grove. I love that play by Ryan Lee. Made a bad pass. <laughs> Played it right to the uh, Phantom defender. But he didn't worry about it. Didn't hang his head. He just went back and uh, knocked the ball away, and his team got the ball back. That's knocked away from Niall Hagen. It's huge as a uh, defender or no matter what sport. You know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make bad passes, miss shots, whatever. But what are you going to do to recover? Just come back right away. Win the ball back. Win the ball back. That should be your mantra. Well, coming right back now with the corner kick. First of the matchup. Ford going airborne. And here's whistle for the foul. Injury stoppage here for West Depeer. That's why I thought that the Broncos were going to try and get the ball uh, onto Horde's head because he's the biggest guy out there, or one of the tallest guys out there. But again, here's that here's that floating ball just hanging there, so it allows. Mm. Looks like he took a shoulder and elbow to the mouth. Uh, allows guy. He's already got a cast on his hand, cast on his arm. Uh, you know, it allows defenders and the goalie even to just camp under that ball. It makes it so much harder. Just really like to see him drive that ball. Head height. Just let Horde attack it. When it's quick, bang, bang like that, it's hard hard to defend. That's what makes him just so good. That for Peyton Horde is just how dominant he can be in the air. And Sean Young says he can be, and always comes up big in the clutch. Scored a game winner, a 2-1 win against Badger with seven seconds remaining. Great play in the midfield. The game winning assist to Zakowski, which is minutes to play in a 2 1 win over Brookfield Central to wrap up the regular season. He also had a huge first goal against Greendale in the sectional finals. So, Cooper Nimmer. He is out for West to Pier. Hopefully he's all right. It looked like he took a shot to the face there. It's off the head of Ashton Ariskis. On the right side with Owen Sheehan. He was the only sub for Union Grove on Thursday. Horde. It's a shot away, but it's wide. You're defending Peyton Horde. You know, at least right now, he's shown us he wants to get the ball in his right foot, so you know he's going to try and cut it back and get it on that right foot for that shot on goal. So you got to play it that way. Make him go to his left, use his left, and see what he can do from that side. So far in this first half, the first six shots belong to Union Grove, three of which have been on the mark. Zakowski blocked. Deflected off Spencer Tennyson. Horde. 
Right now, Union Grove's just moving at a little different speed, a little faster pace. So and now Hort is limping a little bit too as he makes his way back toward the 18. He gives after his after the shot he took outside the 18 there. I think he clipped the defender with his foot. So he, he's been limping since then. Zakowski to Hord. Right back out here with Tyler Hagen. He'll fire, but off the mark. As both teams get ready to make personnel changes. Look at Union Grove High School, a school of 1,049 students. After that first state championship, they finished in third place, a tie for third in the Southern Lakes Conference this season with the Badger Badgers. Elkhorn area and West Tulsa Central finishing tied for first. Coming after the Broncos finished tied for first in the conference last year with Elkhorn area, but fell in a shootout. They had tied Monona Grove 2-2, but fell in a shootout 5-3. That team winning 18 games. This team has now won 19. Horde. Good stop. Ben Waller off the header by Peyton Horde. I think that's going to be Union Grove's uh, answer. Ford has had an opportunity to get his head on a bunch of balls. You can tell that's what they're looking for. He's obviously dynamic in the air. So Waller's always got to be alert. Know where Hord's at, where that ball's coming from. Out it goes off of Braden Kelnhofer. Story on West Tapir, a school 1087. They're looking for their first state championship with their first ever state appearance. Tied for first with Xavier in the Bay Conference as Union Grove. They score first. Zakowski giving the Broncos the 1 0 lead. Well, we talked about their youth. Here's one of their elder statesmen, the senior, Owen Zakowski. It just seemed like it was a matter of time. As soon as they were able to get out in front of the goal, they just haven't. They've gotten up to the 18, into that attacking third. Nice pass. Nice little slot pass. Nice solid finish. Nothing Waller can do about that. Maybe not. Zakowski in particular, but overall, he just felt that was building. That for Union Grove. In the first half, they'd have seen him outshoot West to Pier 9 0, 5 0 in shots on goal. Yeah, it was just a matter of getting inside that 18. They've taken some of those shots from outside. Ford's had a bunch on his head. They just haven't gotten one where they had that solid torso squared to the goal opportunity. Zakowski opened up his hips and put it in that far netting. West Pierce got to be careful here. Union Grove is still on the attack. Ball's still down in the West Pier end. They got to stop the bleeding here. So Barsh. Back after it, Niall Hagen. Ethan Barsh getting the assist down that Owen Zakowski goal. And they come in the 29th minute. And Zakowski now with a couple of goals here at State, 19 on the year. The Broncos have done a nice job of keeping uh, West of Pier boxed in, just making it hard for them to just get it out of their own end. That's a nice job. Horde to Zakowski, who's now scored in seven consecutive matches. And picked up by Ben Waller. Two goals allowed, three saves. He was busy early. Defense doing a nice job in front of him as that match progressed on Thursday against Waukesha West. Nice job by Waller making that save and getting the ball out quick before Union Grove could set their uh, press, set their defense up. 
Allowed the Phantoms to at least get a little breathing room, get the ball over half. It's just been a struggle so far. Borley. Kelnhofer. I think if you're West of Pier, just make the easy passes. Just connect some passes so you can start feeling uh, better about yourself, growing in your confidence. You start connecting some passes together. Uh, don't try the, the dangerous ones because they end up getting intercepted and then uh, Union Grove goes on the attack like they have been all half. So just make it easy on yourself. Zagowski trying to split a pair, he gets fouled. Got tripped up to Owen Zakowski. That's tough. I'm curious if we see that again, if there was a foul there. I'm not sure the official had the best angle on it because he had two defenders. Hard to tell. Looked like they won the ball. But doesn't matter. Zakowski and Tyler Hagan on the ball for the Broncos. Zakowski off the wall, right back to him off the left cleat wide. But again, the pressure continuing to be there for the Broncos, getting shot opportunities. I definitely think uh, Owen Zakowski was hoping for better off both those looks. They have 10 shots in this first half. They had 10 shots all of Thursday. Well, that's what we said uh, as we were talking about this game, Matt, is uh, Union Grove was going to have to step it up in the shot department. Uh, they certainly have. And they're making uh, the West Appear defense and the goalkeeper, Ben Wooler, making them work. And that's the key. I just want to keep that up all game. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Zimmerman playing up top right now for the Phantoms. Kave Garanya, he sports jersey 11. He's had four goals and five assists on the season. Jim right back to Hernandez. Arnstad, haven't seen a ton of touches from a Anywhere near the Union Grove goal. That for Landon Arnstead here in this first half. As he makes his run, perhaps a target on this long pass. And, well, he was the go-to here, but too much on that pass and a pickup for Finn Jacobs. You're right, Matt. We haven't mentioned Arnstead's name or Kowalczyk or Romatowski. Uh, we haven't mentioned their names very much. The Phantoms haven't put them in a position to be dangerous. And we talked about the freshman goalie for Union Grove, Finn Jacobs. He hasn't had to work at all. He's come out for a couple balls that rolled into the box. So no experience needed to handle those plays so far. He was only credited with one assist, but I thought Tyler Kowalczyk, much more active than the box score might indicate on Thursday. And you mentioned had a ton of touches so far from Kowalczyk, who came in with over 24 goals on his season stat line. But he tends to get a touch or two any time. This team's on the verge of finding the back of the net. And you knew Grove is in a 3-5-2, so they got five midfielders really clogging up the middle of the field. So what's going to be key for West Pier is getting the ball to the outsides. That's where they're going to find some openings. Getting it outside, then you've got those three fullbacks for Union Grove. If you can outflank them, then you can make yourself dangerous by bringing the ball across the goal then. Zakowski. Going to use that outside. Kato Brinska, the sophomore midfielder. Brinska. Four goals, couple of assists. West appears got to make sure they know where Peyton Horde is. Even in the run of play, he was just sort of hanging out in the middle. If uh, one of his teammates would have seen him play the ball in the middle of the field, he would have been to the 18 in no time with a good look at the goal. Now they got to make sure they put a body on him because uh, the Broncos are definitely looking to put it on his head on this set play.
Back out it comes with Zimmerman. It's by three, not a fourth. Off the Phantoms counter, cannot thread the needle. Garanio is upfield. Obviously, there's still a lot of this first half remaining, but overall, you look at the Phantoms lately. This ball sent across. This is a team that's had a great deal of success making those halftime adjustments. Totally about to come back on Thursday. Before that, in the sectional final against West Bend West from Oshkosh North, got their lone goal in a 1 0 win in the final 40. They've had some nice second halves here in the postseason. Well, they're going to have to hope they can uh, recapture that magic because they're going to need that second half comeback today. The first half has definitely not played out the way uh, Coach Gambler has hoped. Still looking for shot number one. Can only have two shots in the first half Thursday before things picked up a little bit. Not big time, but a little bit. And they made the most of those limited opportunities in the second half. Changes both sides here. Rich Kiss is back out there for Union Grove. And this is where you find out about a team too, Matt, as they bring substitutes on. What kind of depth do they have? You know, when you're bringing guys on the field to give somebody a little break so they can catch their breath, um, how does it does it drop off at all? You got somebody who's pretty much an equal, or is that going to be a, a weak spot for a few minutes? Uh, that can be a dangerous game to play in a state championship final. Casey Campbell summoned in for West appear during that break. Good takeaway from Ryan Lee. Turn right into trouble, and back come the Phantoms. Kilnhofer on the centering pass. Arnstad, check that. Kowalczyk up top. Nice job by Ryan Lee sliding in and deflecting. That was like some hockey action. Getting yeah. in the way of that shot. Arnstad a little bit further back. Here he is with the takeaway. Got crossed up with Carter Borley. And a whistle against the Broncos, Niall Hagen as we near a couple minutes left here in this first half. Been really impressed with Brian Lee from Union Grove. Doing it all, defending, throwing his body in front of that shot, uh, bringing the ball up. He needed to find a pass on that last one. He got it stolen off his feet, but otherwise he's done a nice job bringing it up, finding a pass, getting the ball rolling to the corner for one of his teammates to run on to. Uh, he's had a good first half for the Broncos. Get back behind that ball. Cameron on that pass. Arnstad! As he celebrates, right now the head referee about to talk with his AR. No full celebration just yet. Well, if this stands, Matt, that's exactly what. No goal. Be offside. No goal. Offside here against the Phantoms. Arnstad after you had Kambler. So West of here gets a break. The ball doesn't get cleared very well. See Kambler getting back behind the ball and then. We got a whiff. Arnstad moves in. Yeah, he's in an offside position. As the ball slips through here. Yep, he's offsides on that back side. So he gained an advantage by being in that offside position. It was not an intentional uh, pass. I believe that is the, the rule. So the fact that it was just a deflection, he's in an offside position, and he can't receive the pass from a teammate. So that's what happened. That's the way this first half comes to a close. So one goal for Union Grove. West appears to look for a shot number one. They thought they had the equalizer. Not the beat thanks to the first offside flag of the afternoon. 
We'll come back and recap the first half that was in this D2 championship matchup that sees Union Grove on top of West Pier. It's 1-0. And now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. In Wisconsin, something important happens in our public schools. Learning and inspiration to shape the next generation. Every single day, public school educators open the doors of opportunity for our students. Hand in hand with families, we work to be sure all students everywhere have what they need to meet their full potential. The members of the Wisconsin Education Association Council go above and beyond for our students. Join us. We act. We teach. We inspire. Bobby, are you there? I heard all this noise and then I was thinking you dropped the connection, uh, but I'm a little worried. Honey, are you all right? Bobby, where are, I hear sirens. Bobby, what's going on? Please, please answer me. Oh God, Bobby, no, no, no. Hey, call insurance agent. Insurance agent not found in contact. Call insurance company. Insurance company is currently closed. Please call back during business hours. For directions, press one. For billing, press two. If you would like to speak with an agent, you have missed dial. Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Don't worry, we're gonna get this taken care of. Thanks, man. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's, She's on the honor roll. She's just on the table. No way. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Menards is your one-stop shop for all your pet supply needs. From leashes and collars to toys and food, you're sure to find what you're looking for. Stock up on Master Paws Original Dog Food for just $28.99 after rebate. Or pick up Master Paws Cat Litter for $9.99 after rebate. If you need it for your pet, you'll find it at Menards. Because we know the pets are family, and family deserves the best. Save big money at Menards. Halftime in this Division II state championship matchup. Union Grove on top of West Pier. It's 1-0. 42nd WIAA Boys Soccer State Tournament. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. In Wisconsin, something important happens in our public schools learning and inspiration to shape the next generation. Every single day, public school educators open the doors of opportunity for our students. Hand in hand with families, we work to be sure all students everywhere have what they need to meet their full potential. The members of the Wisconsin Education Association Council go above and beyond for our students. Join us, we act, we teach, we inspire. Bobby, are you there? I heard all this noise, and then I was thinking you dropped the connection. Uh, but I'm a little worried. Honey, are you all right? Bobby, where are... I hear sirens. Bobby, what's going on? Please, please answer me. Oh, God, Bobby, no, no, no! Hey... Call insurance agent. Insurance agent not found in contact. Call insurance company. Insurance company is currently closed. Please call back during business hours. For directions, press one. For billing, press two. If you would like to speak with an agent, you have missed dial. Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Don't worry, we're gonna get this taken care of. Thanks, man. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's, She's on the honor roll. She's just on the table. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. 
Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Menards is your one-stop shop for all your pet supply needs. From leashes and collars to toys and food, you're sure to find what you're looking for. Stock up on Master Paws Original Dog Food for just $28.99 after rebate. Or pick up Master Paws Cat Litter for $9.99 after rebate. If you need it for your pet, you'll find it at Menards. Because we know the pets are family, and family deserves the best. Save big money at Menards. When I drive in this lane, I move fast and make sudden moves to drive to the hoop and score. But when I drive in this lane, I control my drive. I don't speed or make sudden movements. Speeding and reckless drive are leading causes of injuries and deaths in Wisconsin. Do what I do. Control your drive. Don't speed. Don't be reckless. Zero in Wisconsin. Together we can save lives. Halftime of this D2 championship matchup sees Union Grove on top of West Pier. It's 1-0 through 40 as we take a look at the lone Broncos goal. Plenty of pressure, possession for Union Grove. Owen Zakowski able to get that goal to deflect in. Ethan Barsh on the pass. That came in the 29th as we check out the first half numbers in the first half. Eric, they would see Union Grove out shoot West Pier 10-0. Well, Union Grove has been in the uh, driver's seat. Such a nice pass by Ethan Barch. Slides it through. Zakowski slots it in the side netting. West appears going to need another strong second half comeback. Second half is coming up for this D2 championship matchup. And now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. In Wisconsin, something important happens in our public schools learning and inspiration to shape the next generation. Every single day, public school educators open the doors of opportunity for our students. Hand in hand with families, we work to be sure all students everywhere have what they need to meet their full potential. The members of the Wisconsin Education Association Council go above and beyond for our students. Join us, we act, we teach, we inspire. Bobby, are you there? I heard all this noise, and then I was thinking you dropped the connection. Uh, but I'm a little worried. Honey, are you all right? Bobby, where are... I hear sirens. Bobby, what's going on? Please, please answer me. Oh, God, Bobby, no, no, no! Hey... Call insurance agent. Insurance agent not found in contact. Call insurance company. Insurance company is currently closed. Please call back during business hours. For direction, press one. For billing, press two. If you would like to speak with an agent, you have missed dial. Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Don't worry, we're gonna get this taken care of. Thanks, man. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just not the type. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Menards is your one-stop shop for all your pet supply needs. From leashes and collars to toys and food, you're sure to find what you're looking for. Stock up on Master Paws Original Dog Food for just $28.99 after rebate. Or pick up Master Paws Cat Litter for $9.99 after rebate. If you need it for your pet, you'll find it at Menards. Because we know the pets are family, and family deserves the best. Save big money at Menards. When I drive in this lane, I move fast and make sudden moves to drive to the hoop and score. But when I drive in this lane, I control my drive. I don't speed or make sudden movements. Speeding and reckless drive are leading causes of injuries and deaths in Wisconsin. 
Do what I do. Control your drive. Don't speed. Don't be reckless. Zero in Wisconsin. Together we can save lives. To the second half we go in this Division II championship matchup between the Southern Lake Conference's Union Grove Broncos and the Bay Conference's West Appear Phantoms. A one goal lead for Union Grove. And again, they had a first half that would see them take all 10 shots, five of which on target. West Appear thought they had the equalizer right at the end of that first half, but offside against Landon Arnstad, the lone offside flag in the opening 40. Well, Matt, we'll see if West Appears got another second half comeback in them. And if Union Grove regrets not uh, taking advantage of all those shots on goal. They got one, but they could have had more. Going here for Evan Capel. This is a phantom team that's had some very strong second half showings as of late. And again, look no further than Thursday. Coming back from down 2-0 at the break, scoring twice in the final 40, forcing a couple of overtimes, getting that overtime goal from Landon Arnstad in the 86th minute. And picking up a win in their first ever state tournament game. We've talked about Union Grove's uh, youth, and so far throughout the season, especially in the playoffs, they've overcome, been mentally strong. Uh, this is a different kind of pressure, you know, from being down in those uh, sectional games by a goal at a halftime. Now, all of a sudden, you're up a game at a halftime in the state championship game. That's a different kind of pressure. Now, holding a lead, not trying to mount a comeback. Uh, are they going to be able to maintain the same drive, the same, uh, you know, attack, attack mode that they were in in the first half and continue to uh, stress uh, Ben Wohler of West Appear out? Uh, or are they going to fall back a little bit and, and go into defend first mode? Uh, hopefully they keep attacking. Playing smart, but keep attacking. Still watching Peyton Horde Doesn't look to be, even at this point in the matchup, running at 100%, but finding a way to power through. Yeah, he hurt that right foot on a shot. I think he, uh, after hitting it from about the 18, his foot hit the defender's shin. And he's been uh, looking a little hobbled ever since. That look for Landon Arnstad. Got a couple of shots in that first half credited to Peyton Ford. After we would go without a shot against DeForest Thursday, but certainly his presence was felt. And West appear. Right back on this near side with Capel. Already to start this second half, seen better possession for the Phantoms. On the backside attack, another offside flag. Union Grove playing with some fire there. They got to be super careful. That seemed pretty obvious there. Uh, West Appear connecting some passes now, building some confidence. Your Union Grove, you got to make sure you start shutting those down again, like they did in the first half. They were just all over everything West Appear tried to do. So far in the second half, West appears look more confident. Ford. Look at this Division II bracket, much like in our previous championship matchup in Division Three. The four teams seated here at State, as they have been now for the last seven consecutive seasons. Not paid to be the number one seed. Number four pulling off a semifinal upset, if you will. Dabrinska, nice job carrying the ball from the right side into the middle of the field, almost hit that through ball. Tried to slot it in between a couple defenders. Uh, West Superior defender managed to get a foot out. Back to midfield with Ethan Barsh. Barsh. Into the 18, Zakowski. He got slowed up for the Phantoms. Ben Waller able to locate it. I like that ball, playing it behind the defense, and then you let your uh, forwards and attacking players just run onto it. And there defensively to slow down the Zakowski run, you had Spencer Tennyson. 
That's key as a defender is putting your body on that uh, attacker, just impeding their run just a little bit so they can't be going at full speed. Allowed Ben Wooler to come out, pick that ball up right before Zakowski got there. Lee. Tyler Hagen. Yeah, Union Grove defenders and those midfielders have been just confident on the ball, taking their time. Dubrinska able to earn the corner here for Union Grove. This will be their second corner kick. Well, West Pierre's got to start turning this game around. It looked like right at the beginning of this half that those first, you know, couple of minutes that, okay, they had some renewed energy, but now the game's flipped back to the way it was in the first half. It seems like Union Grove now has just reasserted their, uh, their energy. That corner from Ethan Barsh. That look came from Niall Hagen. Hernandez. Nice try by Hagen. He was trying the uh, half volley. Ball hit the ground. Trying to drive it into the ground and pop it over the goalie. That would have been sweet if he would have been able to uh, get it past the defender. See how Wooler would have handled, handled that one. Yeah. Niall Hagen, Tyler Hagen, the brothers, they have started for this program, so they were freshmen. Different type of players. Yeah, Tyler's been and is one of the uh, three captains. But they have been a vital part, a very special to the success of the Broncos would come to their midfield play. Neither brother is really big, 5'7", five, 5'9". Five, so really good with the ball at their feet and just uh, a little edge. And Tyler, though, a uh, heck of a player when it comes to tackling, winning balls in the air. And very technical. And you have to be. You can't uh, outsize anybody. How du physical anybody at that size. And look for Dubrinska. Nice idea by Dubrinska going to that far post, trying to bend a ball in there. Wooler made a nice play, gathered it up. This bounces out. Lust appear able to start this second half, registering their first shot of the afternoon. It was given to Landon Arnstad. Still a 10-1 advantage here for the Broncos. A couple of teams at State for the first time in their existence. There are four teams to qualify for State for the first time. A wide open field of 16. There were three second timers. A couple of third timers. Division one, an exception. They had four teams that all have at least 10 state qualifications in their history that got here to the Elon Soccer Park. They had a single returning state champion from last year. Only three of 16 from last year's field for back at some point in these last three days. That's uh, unusual, those last two stats you mentioned, Matt, that we don't have any of the returning state champs, and that only three, you said, three of 16 from Correct. last year? Correct, total. Yeah, that's just crazy. It always seems like we have such a big number. This is coming after going into last year's state tournament. You had three out of the four champions back, and he had seven of 16 back, so nearly half the field was back from 2021. That seems more the norm in my memory. Correct. Uh, this year is sort of an aberration. It's a good thing. It's super awesome for all these teams uh, to have this opportunity. Ethan Barsh on the corner. Horde on the near side. Dubrinska. Ooh, a heavy touch. If he could have cut that back onto his left foot, he would have had an opportunity. And besides these two programs, Somerset along with Washburn Bayfield, the other two that got here to stay for the first time. The Castle Guards, uh, Washburn Bayfield held their own, but end up falling a, a double overtime and that second overtime to St. Mary Catholic by a one nothing score. I've been waiting all day to say Castle Guards. Man. They brought the mascot. That would fight. Oh, uh, our last match we had the uh, Plymouth Panther, right? Correct. Lost a foot, you said, the other day? Part of his uh, outfit, correct. Yeah. I believe they, they found it. <laughs> it wasn't lost and found. 
Unfortunately, it, uh, there was no, there was no, <laughs> no magic in the panther paw there. For West to appear here with Spencer Tennyson. As Ford able to stand his ground on his backside, he had Carter Borley, who was enormous on Thursday. West Appear has asserted some more control in this half. It, first half, it was all Union Grove. And so far, even in this half, it's just been too easy for Union Grove to get the ball from their defensive end into the attacking third. West Appear is going to have to figure that out. How do we slow down Union Grove from getting from their final third, from their defending third to the attacking third. They've sort of had their way in the middle of the field. West Pier is going to have to slow that down if they're going to get themselves back into this game. For the Phantoms, Cooper Nimmer. We saw him go out with injury earlier. He is back on. Into the 18, pressure. Get Perez in front. Jacobs, he'll bring it in cleanly. Nimmer had time to uh, set that ball down and get a good cross and instead he tried to half volley it. Some oh. patience, that's hard though when you're trying to come back and you've been under pressure all day. Sometimes it's, uh, it's hard to be patient and settle the ball and play it exactly the way and where you want it. That's gonna find the stands. Thanks to Tyler Hagen. Want to see you dive out and grab that, man. That was close. Pop that window quick. Thinking all the years you've had one deflect off the window one time. That's been about as close have. as it's gotten. What we're talking about teams here at State, what's also kind of unique is that in the past we've seen a, a Brookfield East, Brookfield Central matchup for a championship in 2019. Along those lines, a little in different divisions, the De Pere area, well, well represented with the uh, the Pier Redbirds qualifying in Division One and now West Pier here in Division Two. Yeah, it's a solid soccer area. Just that that corridor between Green Bay and Appleton and uh, down to Oshkosh. That whole lot of good players there. Sent up field by Tyler Hagen. Stays on the attacking end for West Pier. Arnstad. Is it off? Capel. This is what West Pier has to do, make uh, Union Grove do some defending. In that first half, Union Grove only brought on one sub. But they didn't have to defend a whole lot. West Pier didn't hang on, hang on to the ball much. So if West Pier can possess, connect some passes, make Union Grove defend, that's going to slow them down offensively. Here, Peyton Horde is going out. It's going to be interesting to see how the, what the Union Grove uh, attack looks like without him in there. Taking a spot in Owen Sheehan, who was the only substitute utilized in the first half. A little bit deeper for West Pier. They played 14. As this one stays 1-0. Lone goal scored by Owen Zakowski. Ethan Barsh on the assist. Came in the 29th minute. West Pier thought they had the equalizer from Landon Arnstad whistle for offside. Almost at another chance here early in the second half. But again, the offside flag taken away. The Phantoms attack. But unfortunately for West Pier, that's been it. There hasn't been any other any other threats. We had the two offside calls, and that was it. Yeah, officially one shot off target. That look for Dubrinska <laughs> leads to a corner for the Broncos. Brinska's done a nice job over here on the right side. He's challenged that defense, stretched it a little bit, tried to get the ball behind it. He's gotten some corner kicks out of it. Niall Hagen's going to take this corner after he had Owen Sheehan in that spot a second ago. Tap back over. Hagen. He goes up, also there was Richard Perez and West Pier. Giving away to Zakowski. 
See, that's where you miss uh, Peyton Horde. He got substituted for on that corner. Trying to get a better angle, play the ball in. Looked like West Pier was marking zonally. That's where a guy like Horde can get in there at six feet two. Get into a gap and get his head on a ball. Sheehan. Cut back in. Niall Hagen. Sends it across. Header over. Zakowski in front for Union Grove. Maddie didn't attack it. Great cross, far post. Zakowski right in the right spot. That's where you want to go back where it came from. He sort of turtles a little bit. He sort of gets his shoulders up and drops his head. Make it too difficult. That's why I always be thinking, just drive it back where it came from. Take all the thinking out of it. He was trying to figure out where can I go where the goalie's not going to be. It looked like Wohler would have had it covered anyway if he would have tried to put it to that far post. Just put it back where it came from. Grayson Berter in the white uh, West to Pier lineup. Nice cross, though, by the Broncos. They've been dangerous on that right side, especially. Knocked out by Holt Wojcikowski. And the Broncos thrown here for Ethan Barsh. If you're the West to Pier Phantoms, this uh, momentum has not switched in the second half like uh, they had hoped. They're going to have to uh, take it to a different level here. And again, it looked like it might in the first couple of minutes, and then... That's her dissipated. Union Grove, again, yep. it's too easy. It's been too easy for Union Grove to get from their defending half, or uh, third, to the attacking third, to the middle of the field. West Pier is going to have to slow that down, make it more difficult. So Phantom that came in with a lot of experience. Lost four senior starters from last year, but bringing back 13 players. That team last year going 11, 4, and 7. Third place in the Bay Conference. Tied Pulaski in a sectional semi and then lost in a shootout. Pulaski qualifying for state last year for the second time, first time since 2014. This is a team now with nine juniors and six seniors among the group of 21. Knock it off West Bend East, Green Bay East. The Polar Bears of Hortonville and West Bend West in qualifying for states. West Bend West knocked out Pulaski in a sectional semi. Top corner of the 18th. And on the ball here for Union Grove, Niall Hagen. He's going to move out of the area. It's going to be Tyler Hagen who will take this free kick. And Tyler Hagen will give the Phantoms a goal kick. And back out on the field for the Broncos is Peyton Horde taking the spot of Niall Hagen. The Broncos miss Horde on those set plays. West Pier dodged one there. Now they get a start threatening a little bit, being dangerous in the attack. They really haven't been so far in this game. You have Arnstad up top, Nimmer on that far side. And ahead here for Sheehan. Overcomes Dubrinska. Foul here is going to go with Union Grove. Right now back up for West to Pier, Evan Capel. The key for West to Pier is getting the ball on the outside. Union Grove's got three defenders. they got five midfielders. And so that's where your mismatches and your numbers are going to come on the outside. If you can outflank those three defenders, you're going to have opportunities. So Backdoor pass trying to connect with Landon Arnstad. So far, the Phantoms have uh, tried to use the middle of the field a little too much, and they found it, it's just so congested in there. they got to start spreading it out. The 
talk about the experience back from last year for West Pier, one of the other you know, storylines when you look at the personnel, the makeup of this program. Talk about the other night during the semifinals, the fact that you look at a head coach like Brian Campbell and the resume he breaks. Playing for Creighton, Hall of Famer at Creighton, a three-time All-American with the Blue Jays. A couple of years in the USL, 10 years in the MLS. He was a 2004 MLS All-Star on top of being a, a champion on a couple of different occasions. It's an impressive resume right there. Has been with West Appear now for a couple of seasons. Well, he obviously knows what he's doing, and he's had, that's a, a neat experience, you know, through all those different levels you said, Matt. All those different levels, you get different coaches and different, you know, coaching philosophies, and you can you can pick up and, and learn from all that, the good and the bad, and, and also, you know, sort of pick and choose, you know, what, what am I going to use? And then his assistant is Tony Pierce, a Wisconsin Soccer Hall of Famer. He's coached everywhere in the state of Wisconsin and beyond, but... He also played at UConn, won a 1981 national championship. A goalkeeper for the Milwaukee Wave, a three-time All-Pro goalkeeper, part of the Wave Hall of Fame as well. Nice one-two combo. A lot of knowledge there. <laughs> they definitely win. They win the uh, coaching competition here, that's for sure. No, that's great. These kids are, uh, uh, these West Appear Phantoms, they are well coached, that's for sure. Gotta be great if you're Ben Waller to have a ex goalkeeper like Tony Pierce to certainly bounce off of and, and learn from. Exactly. As long as the guys are willing to, to learn from the experiences that Tony Pierce and Brian Kamler have had throughout their uh, long careers uh, professional soccer. They've improved one year to the next has this Phantoms team, and now here at State for the first time. And had a great run through the postseason. At one point during the regular season, they rattled off 12 consecutive wins. That came after a stretch that would see them go 0 2 and 2 after a season opening win against Ashwabana. Well, it's part of that resiliency in their semifinal down 2 0, just fighting back. And the same is true during the season. You know, you can lose a game that. You think you should have won or a game that, you know what, we just didn't play well and we just got beat. You know, how do you how do you maintain that mental strength and say, okay, this is a new game, new day, new half, uh, and we're just going to be better. Well, that's and certainly something with Union Grove, okay? So they're used to playing comeback. Now here they are in this position, trying to maintain this lead. How do they do it over the next less than 18 minutes? Yeah, that's definitely, that's a different challenge from being down and just being, you know, going uh, all out to now where you got to protect a lead. How are we going to handle this? Can we keep playing like we played? Uh, I think they can. So far, West of Pier has not proven that they can solve that yet. Uh, keep playing like you're playing. You can't, you can't let your foot off the gas, at least at this point. Zimmerman, another one of the Union Grove captains. Arnstad. Kellen Hoffer. Way out of the air. Kellen Hoffer. And then outside here with a wrist kiss. And across midfield, Niall Hagen. Going up field. That's a Kowski. Going to play a deflection. Tennyson will send it right back to mid. And Ryan Lee. Through the middle, on the one touch from Zakowski. Nice Peyton ball. Ward. Nice ball by Zakowski. A, a no look, one touch, little diagonal pass. That's always open. Those diagonal runs from the wings are almost always open if you can slide the ball into that space. And foul here in the 64th. And over comes Owen Sheehan. It's been one nothing since the 29th minute. Our second of four here on championship Saturday. Already in Division Three, Sugar River, Belleville, New Glarus knocking off Plymouth, four to one. 
Dubrinska. Running to the outside here, Tyler Hagen. Dubrinska will keep it himself. Now passing off, but on back with Hernandez. Getting back to Tyler Hagen. Hernandez. Able to get the possession right back. Kelnhofer. Now the Broncos get back. Borley. Slowly getting back up is Niall Hagen. And here in the background, there's about 10 coaches in the stands yelling to shoot it. Easier said than done. There's a shot. Well, it's blocked. That deflected off the crossbar and angles out. Grayson Berter with that look. Oh, what a sequence for the Phantoms. Just chaos in the last 30 plus seconds. That's the only problem for West Pier. This has been their best look. It's a scramble and a shot from the 18. The ball happened to pop out. Nice hit. Little unlucky. So that deflected off the crossbar angles out for Grayson Berter. Add that to the list of things that have gone south for West De Pierre so far, including the, the goal that was allowed for offside against Landon Arnstad. And I'll tell you right now, West De Pierre starting to build that confidence. The 2023 WIAA tournament is brought to you by Royal Mutual Insurance Company. Premiums paid here stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. A proud sponsor of the WIAA Royal Mutual Sportsmanship Award for over 50 years. You can sort of feel that momentum switching back a little bit. They had it at, right at the beginning of the second half, then Union Grove took it back. And now West Pier is getting out on that front foot. They are going to have to figure something out, though. They got to they gotta come up with more than hoping for a lucky bounce like that one where the ball popped out at the 18 uh, to an open player. Uh, it's going to have to be a little more uh, constructive than that. Phantom still just two shots, neither on goal. A couple of very close calls. 68th minute. A little more energy from West of Pier. It seems like they're moving just a little fa faster. I mean, that belief now is Kelnhofer. He goes wide. There's that belief now. They seem to come oh so close now, not once but twice. How does uh, Union Grove respond? We talked about their youth and mental toughness. And to be honest, challenge. they seem a little rattled. Yeah. Scrambling back into positioning. And that's normal. Within a game, you've got the ebbs and flows, the ups and the downs, and you just got to weather the storm. That was one of the things we talked about early. Whether it's jitters or whether it's trying to hold on to a lead, absorbing some pressure. Hernandez, Arnstad knocked away. Also allow the Phantoms faithful. They've been waiting to erupt. Now some stuff to cheer about. Remember the first 10 shots of this matchup with Union Grove was 10-0 at halftime in shots. A Phantoms team that had a phenomenal second half on Thursday. Had a big second half in their sectional final win against West Bend West. Zakowski. He'll fire, and a goal kick here for West Pier. Great idea by Hagen, playing that ball forward, just relieving some of the pressure. You had Zakowski wide open, heading to the corner. Just a smart play. They've been absorbing some pressure now. You relieve it that way. I think Zakowski would have liked to uh, get that one back. Owen would have wanted to put that one on goal. Dubrinska makes his run. 
Dabrinska's been the most dangerous Bronco in the second half. Seems like uh, we've mentioned his name a bunch of times. Got some quality touches for him. Only a sophomore among eight for Union Grove. And further than that point about the youth on this roster. Again, just two seniors, only one that starts. And we talked about fatigue. Union Grove, Owen Sheehan, I think, has been their only sub only so sub. far. And you just wonder, you know, I'm just looking out, wondering now the defenders are, they didn't have to do a whole lot in the first half, but now in the second half, they've had to defend more. You're looking at all those midfielders. Uh, Zikowski up top. Uh, is that gonna is that gonna take its toll eventually at the end of this game when they're trying to hold on to this lead? Now that was the case on Thursday too. Only went 12 deep. That Bronco thrown from Ethan Barsh into the corner. Zikowski inside of 10 minutes left here in the second half. Well, first timers here at State. Playing for this Division II Golden Bowl. As of right now, Owen Zakowski in the 29th minute has the match's lone goal. Nice job by Union Grove. Getting that ball to the corner, making the Phantoms come and try and dig it out. Would have liked to see somebody blast it forward a little uh, sooner. Of course, you want to blast it forward to the corner. You don't want to go to the goalie because now we've got a. Uh, punt or a, a throw. The 2023 WIAA tournament is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Injury stoppage for West Pier. Arnstad back up. Phantom looking for a yellow. They won't get it to appear. But with the stoppage, Arnstad being told he has to sub out. Yep, as soon as the ref stops it, the injured player needs to uh, sub out. I have a feeling he'll be right back in. Oh, sure. And again, he had that goal that was disallowed offside right at the end of the first half. West Appear thought they had tied things up, started to celebrate a little bit until they realized the officials were talking and quickly the goal disallowed. It was a good call. Matt, that vibe in the stadium from the crowd to the, the players and the bench. West Pier starting things starting to go their way. Union Grove has, has to stand tall if they're going to hang on. Kelnhofer in the traffic. Right back out to Capel. Gives it a ride. All kinds of traffic too in front of Finn Jacobs, but he's able to bring it in cleanly. Nice job by Evan Capel. Just right away, play that ball right back in. Like to see him play it a little lower, a little to that far, far post. But that's the, the right idea. That was a great idea. Before uh, Union Grove could set their defense, just throw it right back in there when they're sort of in scramble mode. Remember, this was a phantom team that was down 2-1 to one around this same time Thursday against Waukesha West. Eventually tied that game up with 14 seconds left in regulation off a free kick. As they try to again piece something together here in the next less than eight minutes. Well, West Appear is making it more difficult for uh, Union Grove in that midfield right now. We said that had to happen for a comeback in the second half, and they've starting to ramp up the D and making Union Grove work for every pass, every touch, and it's paying dividends. Capel. Now the Broncos leaving it back. Here comes Arnstad. Borley. He scored that goal of 14 seconds left on Thursday. Capel. Right out of the air, Hagen now, the defensive approach will slide and knock it away. There's that tackling ability. Lee, got just enough of it, allowing the defense to reset. West Appear 
West Superior can't forget about connecting some passes. We're not to that point yet where you're in scramble, just dump the ball into the box mode yet. I still think if they get it to the uh, outsides, they'll give themselves uh, some better looks on those balls into the box. Sakowski. Phantoms recover. Outside again with Tyler Kowalczyk. Nice pass. Garanya. Now Zakowski on, on that far touch, I'm gonna angle out. And again, the Phantom will get ready to throw it in. First Union Grove making a change. And we'll see the Broncos, Owen Sheehan, he's back in. Coach Young's team looking to hang on. Another one nothing battle. Like you said, I think Peyton Horde might be uh, a little hurt. They keep uh, bringing him off for a few minutes. Giving him a little uh, break. Yeah, I don't get the sense he's at 100% as Union Grove able to draw this foul. This is one of those things too, when it seems like things are changing and going against you and then all of a sudden all the fouls go against you. So it's a good break for Union Grove. They had a takedown, legitimate foul. They get a chance to catch their breath and they've got a set play. Possibility of putting a dangerous ball into the box. Zimmerman. Zakowski to the corner. Now the offside flag up here against the Broncos. Hard pressed to see where we're sitting, but he must have been beyond those uh, four defenders. Phantoms did a nice job. That's the first Broncos offside flag. There have been two, two costly offside flags against West Pier. And the Phantoms, they've had pretty good possession as of late. Thought they had tied this one up again with a shot that deflected off the bottom of the crossbar and angled out. Furter had that look. Go watch this ball roll out of play. And the Phantoms just need some more width. I'd like to see these fullbacks, these outside fullbacks get into the action. They can add that width so they can keep working the ball. That pass, that diagonal pass to the the eight, corner of the 18 box, it's just too compact. The defenders, the Union Grove Broncos are still all there. They need to get it outside of those guys. Give themselves friendly. more room and time to operate. A friendly fire there with Tennyson deflecting that kick by Grayson Berter. Both will drop back, ball kicked out, Broncos will throw it in. He can't feel his face, he's trying to look strong. Inside of four minutes left here in this second half. Things have picked up in this D2 championship matchup. And again, West up here looking for more of that second half magic. To the middle. Good stop by Sheehan. Playing it out wide. Dubrinska. Tough connection there, trying to find Owen Zakowski. Out of the back with Ben Waller. Through the middle. Yep, Union Grove keep pressuring those defenders. And a foul here against the Phantoms. Stumbling, fumbling, Ethan Barsh eventually going down, able to get the whistle. Under three minutes to work with. Well, the last uh, 15, 20 minutes haven't been uh, very pretty for the uh, Union Grove Broncos, but they've been effective. Now, Tim has found ways of their own to play comeback for some late second half deficits. And a stop at the clock here because the Broncos are making a change with the lead inside of five minutes. And again, right back in is Peyton Horde taking the spot of Ashton Rishkiss. This second half has seen just three shots for the Broncos. Four shots for West Pier. They only have one shot on goal. Sent downfield. Waller also battling the sun from his position. will pick it up as we near two minutes remaining. 
It's been like the uh, tale of two halves here. We had Union Grove on the front foot, all, all first half, some uh, exciting stuff. And then the second half has sort of been a slog uh, for both teams. West De Pere finally picked it up, connected some passes, looking way more dangerous in the second half. Union Grove still were moving the ball pretty well, uh, just not getting the chances they got in the first half. Sent off field by the Broncos. Zakowski using the outside. That was sent out. That was off Evan Capel. Zakowski does a nice job of holding up the ball, keeping a defender on his back, keeping the ball at his feet. He's taken it to the corner a few times, made West appear come and dig it out. Taking precious seconds off the clock. Zakowski along with Horde. And far side again there with Ethan Barsh. He has the assist on the lone Broncos goal. Trying to hang on here instead of 60 seconds left. And the Bronco fans rise to their feet. Just want to get that ball to the corner. Just sent down field and a foul here against West Appear to stop at the clock. That foul goes against Kelnhofer. And right now, look at it. See, Union Grove's got to yeah. be smart. The clock is running. Well, they stopped it after that oh, ball kicked away. Oh, did they stop away. it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Jackson Zimmerman being sent away from a couple of West De Pere players. <laughs> and we have a yellow card given here to Jackson Zimmerman. And it looks like Braden Kelnhofer is being sent off with the yellow for West De Pere. That's the last thing you need to do if you're the Broncos. You can't lose your concentration here. That's what cost Waukesha West on Thursday. A costly foul right at the end. Free kick, boom, yep. on overtime. Exactly. Everything's in your favor. You got a kick coming. 46 right. seconds left. Zimmerman's done a really nice job on the defensive end. On the ball is Peyton Ford. Now the whistle. Same thing, drop to the corner. If it goes out, get it outside. Trying to connect with Zakowski. Gonna make the save, Phantoms do, but right back to Barsh. Up for Zakowski through midfield. Final 30 seconds. Going outside and downfield for Zakowski. That's fine, make them chase. Left back through Waller, 20 seconds left. Zakowski, got a piece. Perhaps one final push for the Phantoms. Here comes Carter Borley, through the middle. Arnstad, final seconds ticking down. Broncos send it away, final five seconds. And the Union Grove Broncos, your 2023 Division II Boys Soccer State Champions, their first in program history. Oh, was that a finish? And the Broncos able to hang on after scoring a goal back in the 29th. And the Broncos are bringing home the 2023 Division II Golden Bowl. Matt, that's why they play the game. It looked like Union Grove was in the driver's seat, especially at halftime. And West Appear made it interesting, and it was nerve-wracking all the way until the final whistle. So the Broncos cap it off their 2023 season with a Golden Bowl. And we'll come back with more here for the Eline Soccer Park. And now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. In Wisconsin, something important happens in our public schools. Learning and inspiration to shape the next generation. Every single day, public school educators open the doors of opportunity for our students. Hand in hand with families, we work to be sure all students everywhere have what they need to meet their full potential. 
The members of the Wisconsin Education Association Council go above and beyond for our students. Join us. We act. We teach. We inspire. Bobby, are you there? I heard all this noise, and then I was thinking you dropped the connection. Uh, but I'm a little worried. Honey, are you all right? Bobby, where are... I hear sirens. Bobby, what's going on? Please, please answer me. Oh, God, Bobby, no, no, no! Hey, call insurance agent. Insurance agent not found in contact. Call insurance company. Insurance company is currently closed. Please call back during business hours. For directions, press one. For billing, press two. If you would like to speak with an agent, you have missed dial. Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Don't worry, we're gonna get this taken care of. Thanks, man. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soft. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tight. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Menards is your one-stop shop for all your pet supply needs. From leashes and collars to toys and food, you're sure to find what you're looking for. Stock up on Master Paws Original Dog Food for just $28.99 after rebate. Or pick up Master Paws Cat Litter for $9.99 after rebate. If you need it for your pet, you'll find it at Menards. Because we know the pets are family, and family deserves the best. Save big money at Menards. Back at the Elon Soccer Park in Milwaukee, wrapping up championship match number two. The 42nd WIAA Boys Soccer State Tournament, D2 title goal in the route of the Union Grove Broncos. Coach Young, his program, they have come a long way from one win his very first season. They were 1 in 20. This year, all these years later, a decade plus, 24 and 1, wrapping up their season with eight consecutive wins. but in their first state appearance, their first golden ball, mentioned just a few years ago, their first regional championship last year, their first ever conference championship, and now, here in 2023, a state title, they have come a long ways. They've just kept building and building, and Coach Jung has made sure that they keep heading in the right direction, and they came out and played an awesome first half, and had the pedal to the metal, and then we saw the fight of West appear late in that late in that second half, made it nerve-wracking, but the Broncos pulled it out. Owen Zukowski, our player, joining us on the field, coming through with the game-winning goal in the 29th minute. Owen, thanks for your time. Tell us about that goal. Uh, it was amazing. Ethan Barsh played a great ball when I was calling for it, and thought it was just going to the back of the net the whole time. I just I just felt it. I took a good touch, good first touch off the ball from Ethan Barsh. It was a great ball, and just buried it, far post. Keeper got a touch on it, but it still went in. And man, it was a great feeling. No words to describe what it feels like. Speaking of feeling, what was the feeling coming into this championship match? Obviously, you guys have played on this field in a semifinal first state appearance on Thursday. Did it help with the calm, the nerves coming into this championship game? The feeling, the feeling for us was just it's our first time, so let's just stay together. And the mentality was we were going to win the whole time. We never had any doubt in ourselves, and our team the whole season just grew together. And Coach Young kept us together the whole time, man. He's a great coach, a great guy, and he just kept us all together, all the teammates, everyone. We all stuck together the whole time, and we won together, and now we're here. Take us through the last 10, 15 minutes. How are you guys able to weather the storm and weather West appears attempt to, to tie this game up? It was a great team effort. Honestly, it was just a battle from the last 15. We had to go out, take it to the corner, waste some time. You know, it's part of the it's part of the soccer game. And we just had to manage the time, manage the game, and we did well. And we came out with the result we wanted. Real quick, Owen, you're a senior. What's next for you after this? Uh, for, I'll be going to college. I don't know where yet, but good things are here to come. Absolutely. Owen, thanks for your time. Congrats on the state championship. Thank you very much. 
The Broncos get it done over West Pier. What was a heck of a battle. What a finish. The Phantoms scrambling, trying to get that equalizer. They thought they had it at the end of the first half. Offside, taking away a goal for Landon Arnstad. And then Grayson Berner to shot the fucked off the crossbar and angled out. But here's the goal that came in the 29th minute. Owen Zakowski, Ethan Barsh on the assist. That would be it. As Union Grove outshot West Pier 13 to four. Outshot four to three in the second half. It was 5-1 Broncos in shots on goal. Ethan Barch, great pass, and a fantastic finish from Owen Zakowski. Uh, Union Grove, from the beginning to the end, they were in control of this game. As you see the uh, stats, now it's time for the Wisconsin DOT play of the game, and surprise, surprise, what do you think it's gonna be? My right. guess is the <laughs> Owen Zakowski goal. Not the pass though, look at this pass. This should be one B right there. Takes the ball back, cuts it diagonally. Zakowski, like he said in the interview, nice first touch. That's the key to that. Set himself up to open up his hips, put it in the side netting. And that was your Wisconsin DOT player of the game. Zero in Wisconsin. Together we can save lives. We'll come back and put a wrap on this one. And now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. In Wisconsin, something important happens in our public schools learning and inspiration to shape the next generation. Every single day, public school educators open the doors of opportunity for our students. Hand in hand with families, we work to be sure all students everywhere have what they need to meet their full potential. The members of the Wisconsin Education Association Council go above and beyond for our students. Join us, we act, we teach, we inspire. Bobby, are you there? I heard all this noise, and then I was thinking you dropped the connection. Uh, but I'm a little worried. Honey, are you all right? Bobby, where are... I hear sirens. Bobby, what's going on? Please, please answer me. Oh, God, Bobby, no, no, no! Hey... Call insurance agent. Insurance agent not found in contact. Call insurance company. Insurance company is currently closed. Please call back during business hours. For direction, press one. For billing, press two. If you would like to speak with an agent, you have missed dial. Sometimes humans are just more helpful. Don't worry, we're gonna get this taken care of. Thanks, man. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just not the type. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Menards is your one-stop shop for all your pet supply needs. From leashes and collars to toys and food, you're sure to find what you're looking for. Stock up on Master Paws Original Dog Food for just $28.99 after rebate. Or pick up Master Paws Cat Litter for $9.99 after rebate. If you need it for your pet, you'll find it at Menards. Because we know the pets are family, and family deserves the best. Save big money at Menards. Unauthorized use or rebroadcast of this program and live internet stream without the express written consent of Allen Media Group, Wisconsin Broadcast Division, is strictly prohibited and a violation of U.S. copyright law. Championship Saturday from the Alliance Soccer Park in Milwaukee and the latest champion to be crowned. Union Grove in Division Two, their first in their first ever boys soccer state tournament appearance. They've come a long way in just over a decade's time, and we've already seen in Division Three Belleville New Glarus with their first ever state championship. They went 4-1 behind a hat trick performance from Aiden Hadelberg. Still to come 
In Division One, it's Middleton against Brooke Fulies. That's got to make it to be a real good championship matchup. Same thing in Division Four with Sorlin Lutheran and St. Mary Catholic. We go to the bullpen and Greg Zonafil coming on to join Eric for the call of those two championship matchups. To wrap it up in Division Two, the Union Grove Broncos, a 20-win season, and they celebrate as they lift that golden ball, the 2023. Your 2023 Division II state champions. What a day it has been so far. Again, with two more matchups to come as we roll on with the 42nd WIAA Boys Soccer State Tournament. Owen Zakowski, the game winner. The Broncos, your state champs for Eric Shazer, our entire crew. Matt Middle Saints along for the line Soccer Park. And coverage of the 2023 WIAA Boys Soccer State Tournaments. The WIAA Boys State Soccer Championships have been brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation, zero in Wisconsin. Together, we can save lives. Rural Mutual Insurance Company. Premiums paid here stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. A proud sponsor of the WIAA Rural Mutual Sportsmanship Award for over 50 years. And WEAC. We teach. We inspire. <laughs>